All right, we've tasted the springs. Let's move on to some passion. Mm. This elegant tin with photos of Mr. Grant and Mr. Grant. Yes, there's Mr. Grant, Grant and son having this um, little family moment here. I have to say, I'm not sure what the European perspective on this, but I think these labels are awful. <laughs> They're just busy and camp as well. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, goodness me, I don't know. I say no more. We're about whiskey here. <coughs> So, Passion, which I think is fairly similar to Springs, and the bottles, as we've seen, tell us absolutely nothing. So, um, we'll just have to see okay. what we can discern. On the nose, there is immediately less prickly alcohol heat mm. and a touch of jasmine. So, it's a mostly a sweet, sherry, honey smelling whiskey with a little bit of floral herbaceousness. Mm. This one to me, um, it looks. I think you'd agree that's uh, fairly identical there, uh, very, very medium for a sherry whiskey. So again, uh, we're looking at the same sort of casks, second and third fill, with a few first fills, I'm sure, just in there for a bit of seasoning, but not a great deal. And as Dave says, the aroma is really a bit more nuanced than the first one. I think this is maybe, maybe a bit older on average. It's certainly a bit more interesting and significantly less of that young spirit. There's a lot less rawness coming in through the nose. There's a good bit of savoury character in this one. More of a savoury honey, more of a brininess coming through, which is quite unusual mm. for Glen Farkle. I'm not getting brine, but I am getting kind of uh, flaky pastry. Mm. No, much drier, much savourier, and yeah, to me, just a little bit salty, which is very unusual for Glen Parkless. Not a not a note that comes up very often in what is in a very very mainland distillery. So let's see what's on the palate. Hmm. Mm. That is smooth and warm. There is a distinctly bittersweet undercurrent, which is turning into more of an overcurrent. Things like prunes, dates. Mm. And really dark bush honey. You know, despite the more savoury nose, this is a more overtly sherried whiskey on the palate. Of course, they're both sherry matured whiskies. If the bottles are to be read verbatim, they're 100% sherry matured. Because it doesn't mention bourbon cask anywhere. They're... This one is more archetypical of a sherried whiskey. There's very, very warm notes. There's a little bit of sort of fruity brandy butter coming in there there's very very rich heather honey and there is dark more sort of stewed fruits um, I'd agree with the plums and prunes that sort of end of the spectrum there's far less I think spirit flavors the acetone yeah. is far far less evident here so I'm only getting a faint whiff of that and that's after adding a generous mm. slug of water I'll try that with water too mm. Hmm. Some lemons, some sherbet lemon confectionery. No, I agree. There's significantly more complexity here. The, it's a bit of the a nose hammer. and the palate is broader in both <laughs> cases. It's neither of them are particularly deep. Neither of them really go on a journey to speak of. But in terms of what is there up front, this one definitely is bringing more. I'm getting more kind of wild herbs and flowers, making heather, jasmine, lavender, daisies. Mm. Lavender, even just a little bit of thyme mm. coming through there as well. Maybe just a bit less spice on this one, but there's still there's still a wee bit of clove and cinnamon coming through, so still very typically sherry like the last one but I think this one just has a bit more subtlety mm. going on and with its softer voice it's just got a bit more room to say a bit more about itself and I think it really does come through so that's that's pretty definitive for me I think I think passion maybe maybe aptly named and that I can be a little bit more passionate about it. I'm going to score that one 
a good 76. It's still not a whopping score, but I'd say this is a markedly better whiskey than Springs, which is interesting because they're exactly the same price. All of these are priced at the same point. They're all aimed at the same market, but if I was buying any number of these, it would be uh, passion all the way. The other one, which I, um, if I'm reading the back of the bottle correctly, I believe is called Team, Glen Parkness Team is the third one, which I was not able to get a hold of. Um, someone in the comments may in fact be able to help us out there um, with their own uh, thoughts on whether or not Team is a, uh, is a winner. That will be the, the missing link in this, um, what is a trilogy of whiskies. They should all be very, very available in Europe. But alas, I won't be able to review that one unless I find it in the future. However, what would you score this one, Dave? Okay, as you said, they're both very, very similar whiskies, but also kind of different too. And whereas Springs is much more blended, has fewer distinct high points or low points or distinct voices of its own. Passion is way more unique and singular. You can taste more specific characters, more specific flavors, and I like that too. It's lacking some of the more savory or sharp or spicy notes. It's much more evenly toward the sweet end of the spectrum, but it's got so many distinct characters that I think make it more unique, more enjoyable. I'd give it a 75. Mm. I think I'm fairly confident in saying that Comparing it to Springs, Passion is a manifestly superior whiskey. If you're going to buy one or the other, I would have no qualms in directing you towards Passion. I mm. think it just has more in the bottle, and it has better whiskey. Springs, bottle. I would hardly recommend if you're, say, sharing with friends who have a taste for, say, the Johnny Walker Pure Malt Blends, or if you're going to use it to make some of the truly superior um, Scotch whiskey cocktails. Mm. Anything that needs a really good um, Scotch whiskey. It, would, to it would make a hell of an old fashioned. I won't disagree there, but if you're into springs, I really think you do have to be into distinctly young whiskey, which a lot of people are. Um, it's not a very, um, not a very um, English sort of way of appreciating Scotch whiskey, but it is a very European way mm. of tasting Scotch whiskey. So, who knows? If you want a whiskey that's a whiskey and experience in its own right, then passion is the way to go, mm. out of these two. Um, you can conceivably help us out here, because these, uh, these are not pitched at us. We are, we are drinking these almost illegally. They weren't made for us, they weren't bottled for us, they weren't sold to us. I got these quite out of chance, and I got them because I thought they'd be quite fascinating, which they are. What they're made for is the European market, specifically the German market. So if you're someone tuning in from Deutschland, and I know you are because I can see you there on the analytics, even if you don't comment, I know <laughs> we have people tuning in from Germany, because um, I know they absolutely enjoy their quality drams over there. It's a real mecca for good whiskey in that part of Europe. Let us know what you think mm. about this range and if you want to go into a bit more depth, I'd love it if you gave us your angle of what people in that sector of the European market are looking for in their Scotch whiskies. Because I know what I'm looking for in mine, but I don't represent the um, really the bulk of the market. Not that we're in England, but even if we were, we would represent a fraction of the um, Scotch malt whisky market. Because Europe is a very, very big place and England is very small compared to that. So I would love to know. If you can do us a favour there, I will absolutely read and comment back. But in the meantime, this has been a slightly experimental episode of the Single Malt Review. Breaking borders, breaking boundaries. But not and, breaking any uh, laws. No, no indeed. So we will enjoy this and catch you back very shortly next time with a few very interesting drams. We are going to go maybe even a little bit uh, crazier and more foreign with our next one it might be something that's not made of malt at all but we'll just have to see in the meantime slanger juice keep safe and um, do please comment with your views because i'd love to know i really would mm.